done. I presume there's enough memory. Uh, so, hi guys, welcome back to the Always Wired podcast. We're joined today by a special guest, uh, Ro- going by his uh, Zoom name, he's Ross the Stallion Champion. How you doing, Ross? No bad, mate, getting on no bad, mate. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with the most beautiful man on YouTube. Thank you. Ah, pleasure. You're not the first person to say it, Ross. You've not been the last. <laughs> uh, getting the comments all the time. Many, many other podcasts. Joe Rogan, he's raging. Doesn't like it. That's how he moved off YouTube. Can you take it? Awesome, mate. Awesome, mate. I was, I, our late friend, June Cummins, that's meant to be here. Uh, I would say he's the sexist if he was on tonight. But you're a close second, mate. Ah, he's... He's no, that's so it matters. <laughs> He's no, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's my turn to shine. It's my turn to take that fucking pedestal. But I feel like I've got to step up. I feel like an actor, uh, like the understudy, the big play, the uh, the big man on campus is pulled out at the last minute, and I need to I need to step in to dazzle the crowd, and it's it's something I could do. But Ross, I'm slightly dis- I'm a wee bit disappointed. I I fully expected you. To be sitting draped in your British Championship. Oh, um, right, honestly. <laughs> Doesn't many, fit me anymore, mate. I'm a fat fuck now, mate. <laughs> many people might not know. Ross was a British champion a Mo- a Muay Thai. Ah, uh, that's it, mate. He's won his many claim- claims to fame. So if I, if I ever come up in a, uh, a pub quiz, who won the 2013 <laughs> under 18 <laughs> British Championship 70 to 80 kilogram class? And, there you go. Sorted. He's he's no he's no who he go for. Uh, exactly, mate. So there you go. I've just won you 20 quid in a free dinner. So fantastic. Sorry, quid in a free dinner. <laughs> <laughs> if that's one the fucking bonus question, if that's the bonus question, then the always wired fans will be winning. So that's exactly. I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot of guys on here a lot know a lot more about fighting than I do. Um I kinda back to it when it started getting to the big scare guys. I was a wee bit of a shite bag, so I, there'll be a lot of folk that might know me about fighting, but I don't think there's, I don't think there'll be many people that have done what you've done as well. Let's see, winning a championship, well, that's pretty, it's pretty fucking right. good. It's something that you can't tell the wins about the grand mates, just go, <laughs> but we still get the belt. <laughs> Aye, the belt does not fit me anymore. It's really <laughs> you're in, you're in the WWE, what about like Ric Flair? <laughs> that's actually, it's more like a bracelet now. He used to go with my waist, man. It's just like a wee bracelet, a wee necklace now. <laughs> it's absolutely tiny. <laughs> but um, I, no, I wasn't saying that's a, that was my hang back in the day. If anybody's obviously, I'm sure the guys on here are more into MMA and all the rest of it. And I've listened to a few of the podcasts to kind of brush up on some of the kind of the normal talking points. But uh, going off the agenda tonight, it's going to be a bit random and a bit throwback to all the kind of memories of, of children, a sort of children. <laughs> As, as, children. as children. Well, that's a podcast for another day. We need you on for that one, mate, definitely. <laughs> that, that's how you can't be worried. He's been caught up with some legal issues. <laughs> He's technically not allowed to be on the internet between, between seven at night and seven in the morning. <laughs> He's got an internet cocky, isn't he? Lives in, lives in China. <laughs> Is that yeah. fucking tag, mate? Uh, but I, just, to, just to kind of come back to that, uh, the Muay Thai because I was kind of I was kind of thinking about that earlier and I was I was thinking about how how kind of fucking good that gym actually was because for anybody that doesn't know it was the uh, it was the North Ayrshire Muay Thai gym uh, from Zolcoats it's it was fucking excellent man it was something back in the day man it was brilliant and then I don't know if um, also the like, last kind of big show they held was in like 2013 I think they done the Civic Centre and I was awesome but then they hired out the Metro back in the day uh, before that was shut down, and they'd done the big fight in there, do you mind that? That was quite good. I remember that night at the Metro, because that was, I think that was one of the first real big fights ever brought to the three towns, but it was right. in, like, martial, like, martial arts experts were writing about it all online, but guys had come down, I think a guy had come up from England or something, just to just to write about this event, because that was, Alan, Alan Weaver was the main event, wasn't he? Alan Weaver, because he was fighting for, like, a European title or something like that. Which yeah, is quite nuts to think that took place in a wee shitty nightclub in Solcourt, isn't it? But uh, aye. Oh. Yeah, your boy didn't your boy didn't fight in that because uh, the guy backed it, but I'm not saying I'm not saying shit bag. Shit bag. Did that not happen to Cassie as well when she was the when she was fighting for the worlds? Ah, she she so she done like a British Championship belt down in Birmingham or something like that, and then they went over to Thailand. Uh, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Thailand or something like that. 
and then to do the actual fight and the last you saw warming up on the pads in the bag and that stuff and you can yourself man she was nuts weren't she ah she and, was uh, excellent man really good I they seen her they seen her warming up man they were just like ah, nah <laughs> no thanks <laughs> cause that was it as well it was, it was so mad like see if you're a wee gym in like a wee coastal town a, a salt coast like see the amount of actual like, champions they had cause like obviously you had the British Cassie had the British in the world uh, Dale had the was, European I uh, Dale was the European as well and I think there was one or, one or two more. It was, there was a few other folk. There was that many folk went and there was that many folk at different age levels and different weight categories and all the rest of it. Do you know what I mean? And it was Aye. it was nuts. It was, it was a cracking gym back in the day and it's just a shame it kind of after about kind of 20, 2013 it'll just kind of I know just kind of fall apart. As, as a, I think a lot of folk went to Wasaba or Fusamba. Uh, the one in Kelly? Uh, Wasabama. 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 Aye, that's it. Uh, and that's I think that was the gym uh, that Jojo Calderwood that fights in the UFC now. I think that's the gym she used to train at. She was, was that from, the resume, huh? Aye. Aye, she was, she was born in Irvine, but lived, I think she lived mostly in Kelly. There was a the guy I work with, Big Kev, done it, man. Honestly, he's an absolute nutcase, but he, uh, <laughs> I hope he's not listening, but uh, he he was a trainer at the one in Kelly. Right, uh, aye. Fuck me, man, honestly. I tell you, I wonder what I run, down, I run into Kev's in a dark alley. Oh, Shout out to Big Kev. <laughs> Big oh, Kev, I, I went to his gym for a couple of times, I think it was like two years ago, just to try and get back into it. And like, I'd done like Friday, sparring on a Friday, and I was like, fuck that. Honestly, man, the guy's like, he's like a bit taller than me, so he's about six foot five or something, but he's just fucking huge and covered in tattoos and that stuff. So you just look at him and just think he's going to fuck me up. <laughs> uh, but, um, that's what I'm saying. I'm not as good as I used to be, mate, but like, also you used to date with me back in the day, so you'll know how good it was. I, I still get, I still get fucking nightmares for that banana kick. Let's see that running low kick used to date for the leg. I was like, I Sorry, had a horrible experience in my life. Bless up, bless up Adam Campbell and he's fucked up by, you know. <laughs> he was always, he was always the guy taking it. <laughs> but for some reason, you were always just paired with Adam. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I, was, I just felt so bad. This is really mate, just, mate. I feel bad when I look back sometimes because we made him buy a pair of Adidas Sambas, didn't we? Mind that we made him buy a pair because we, we, we said they were pure smart and then they got them and we were like, fucking rotten, mate. Ah, okay, I we keep forgetting about all the, all the kind of hasty, sh- I was hasty shit we done. So I was thinking at the time we got um, BB, like we both bought BB guns when we were doing watch, yeah. we were doing at the cinema. Uh, took you and up the mill down and just shot him in the head. <laughs> Ah, exactly, but then you get in his back door and he gets his big compound bow out. And he's Aye. like, oh, here, mate. And he's like, oh. <laughs> he's like, right, you shot me, I can shoot you now. Like, never. Uh, you know, he set his house on fire with that thing. He was, he was ah. lighting arrows. But like, lighting arrows, I don't know if that was the compound bow or the, the other bow he had, because he had like, a basic bow before that, and then he get like the real big compound. But he was like, lighting arrows on fire and firing them up there and one them landed in his gutter. <laughs> What the house nearly, the house nearly up in the smoke. Aye. It was a converted farm you lived in, I know. Aye. Aye, so I would have blazed up. No, he was um, some boy. I was going to say, I mean, uh, this is back in the day, I thought, you know, like, I feel so old talking about this now. But like, back when like, Halo Reach came out, I think it was. Um, Aye. His wee headset for his Xbox 360 broke. And like, we were sitting on Xbox and like, he had to take, he had, his wee head bit broke, so he taped the, the head phone bit to his head. <laughs> And then, like, I mean, like, just when he was like, all right, boys, I'm away after night, it's just later. And he hadn't turned his Xbox off yet, and you could just hear him ripping the tape. <laughs> his head. And his dad, his dad was in the background laughing. He was laughing, you're done, you're a fanny. Or he's just like... <laughs> having gone, fuck up, da. <laughs> <laughs> and then a big slap. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess what, what we were saying earlier, he was supposed to come on as well. And some of the, some of the stories he has, because he was a, uh, he done a lot of bo- like Ewan does a lot of boxing. He's had a couple of boxing fights, and just something that's something that sticks out for me is when he was fifteen years old and he was at school. Uh, he was doing a he was trying to do like an underground unlicensed fight at fifteen years old. I think he was fighting he was fighting like a fairly grown adult, uh, and the school ended up contacting the promotion and getting it shut down because he was trying to sell tickets to the teachers. <laughs> He's a nuts boy, honestly. I wish I was on. Uh... Just to kind of see the full madness, because the boy was like, in the, like, I don't know, man, he could have been in like the, sim- the, the London Symphony Orchestra playing violin. Aye. 12, 12 o'clock, and then by one o'clock, he's out in the street brawling with somebody outside the nightclub or something. 
I that, that was I, I growing up, he was at the, the Royal Music School of Drama uh, as well up in Glasgow. He used to go up there every Saturday. That's where he spent his weekends. Uh, now, he's, now he spends it in the cells. Do you mind? Do you mind? We had that house party when we were like oh, 16 or something. Oh, I think we were 15, 16 at my house. And I think that was the first time we ever drank. Uh, we, gave, we gave him that beer. And all this, I, mean, well, I think it was like Miller's. So it's like 4% or something. Oh, that uh, was and he, he, he drank it with his right hand. So I'm like, oh, Buffalo. He's like, oh, fuck, right. So you have to turn it. And uh, next, about half an hour later, I come back from the sales and he's got my wee sister's pink bike, <laughs> bike helmet on, running into walls and all that stuff, thinking, like, <laughs> this was no fun than it is. <laughs> You know, again, what you had, and then I mean, Stephen, Stephen, I like to Stephen take him up to bed, and they took him up, man, like stripped him down to his like Y fronts, <laughs> and then like half an hour later, he comes down the stairs with like a box of shreddies. What, well, Stephen, mate? I thought you were coming to cuddle me. <laughs> so I think he ended up chasing some wee guy with that bike helmet on. I think a guy we went to school with, he pedaled past the house, and you uh, started chasing him with that bike helmet on, letting the hang about him. Were you guys fucking terrified? Like pedaling like fuck. I was I, I was up the stairs like talking to folk and then like I just like get, thought I was just getting sent like Snapchats of you like jumping about my kitchen and then I came down the stairs and this bit of pizza just went flying past my head. I'm like, oh, I remember that. And, Aye. And it stuck stuck to the wall <laughs> and, like, and I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? And you standing there in his boxers. Like, oh, who done that? And then I'm like, you mate, you're just standing there with another bit of pizza in your hand. It was fucking cool, yeah. Yeah, he's over with a plate of pizza and he's ah, right, come on, own up. Who done it? Who done it? <laughs> I know. I was raising man. That was the only reason my mom found that I had a party because of a big, a big pizza grease stain on the wall. Oh, fuck. Because that, because that was that party was actually what got me thinking about that Muay Thai belt. Because I was thinking uh, about, uh, I was thinking about oh, a party. Oh no, I know you're gonna say. And I was going through the agenda and I was, I just remember Ross coming down with the tap off and this, this belt on his waist, like, I'll actually get it, mate, I'd love it. Try to get a pull, try to get a pull, mate. That's it. I'd, I'd love that shit. You ever seen Conor McGregor? We all are about to bang him. That's it, mate. That was back when the belt used to fit me and I had like a, I had like a 10 inch waist. <laughs> yeah. now, now after lockdown, man, I'm a, I don't know, man, I could be gone for and world's fattest man or some shit now, but um, I also had a wee, a wee petite waist back in the day, and I was just, I was lanky and skinny, and that just helped me in my fights, because I was like 80 kilo when I was like, what, 15, 16? Aye. I was like six, I was like six foot two, so you just all the kind of thought you'd get up against was either somebody that was kind of like you, kind of lanky and skinny, or you got kind of somebody who was like kind of short and quite tubby. Um, Aye. Preferably you liked the other one, because you could just stand up and just kind of slap them about. I always said that kind of, you always had that kind of reaching and you could do you could utilize your kicks quite well on them because that was that was probably the best part of your arsenal. Because I, I remember what sparring me and it was shite. Because <laughs> 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 like, obviously I, I fit the first kit, I fit the latter kit. I was like the wee stick guy <laughs> trying to reach you, just getting blasted in the legs. And then when you're getting blasted in the legs, you're getting blasted in the solar plex. It was that Stuart, it was that Stuart, Stuart, <laughs> swap, go take, I'm calling a sub. Stuart. That's Stuart like, mate, I'm wounded. I'm wounded, fuck. Aye, fuck. That was, like, that, was, that was an expert review, mate, of my, my Muay Thai fighting, mate. It was shite. <laughs> oh, it was fucking shit. It was so shite, man. Yeah. It was good, man, honestly, but back in the day, yeah. like, all, the, all the fighting and all the rest of it, it was good. But especially when you were young, it was just all a good laugh and your pals would come down and you'd get on a Saturday morning and then you'd go out and, I don't know, go and jump in the number 11 bus that we were talking about earlier and fight the junkies and all the rest of it. So. Experience the carnage. That is the number eleven bus. Cause I, rem- I remember once right, I got in that bus. And it was like, it was at like prime time for it. It was at like Saturday three o'clock or something. I think I was coming back to Irvine. Uh, yeah. And there was this guy out the back of the bus, and he was asking me if I wanted to fight his staffy. And <laughs> funnily enough, this guy ended up making it to Twitter. Right, uh, so I, seen a, I seen a post about it like a month later. A guy put up the exact same post and took a picture of the guy in the dug, and it was the exact same guy. So this guy's clearly get form for asking folk to want to fight his dog. And <laughs> Doug looked like why'd you get? And I was, was like, no. That was his start. I mean, he, j- he jumped on at Kelly and just got a return to a Jawson. I <laughs> just ended up fighting a dog. When they when they dug through the wee uh, the chain collar with the chain lead, or oh, hench, would that a fire hydrant with a heat? No. So fuck you, I was like, fuck you, I just dug no. <laughs> Doug's on the back, call me if I've been a shite bag, I'm like, no, you Like I said, Millie was saying earlier on, man, like, if anybody's not heard of the number 11 bus, it was just a, 
I think for down here, sorry, it's maybe Google it. I'm pretty sure there's, there's probably videos of it going about the internet. Or, it used to be our uh, Facebook page. I, uh, <laughs> stories of the number of us. I, I put up one the day that I was talking about earlier. I, I feel pure sad, mate. I think I spent my early teenage years just on the number 11 constantly. That was great. Uh, and I had one up the day saying that a woman just came on the day with a treadmill. I said, <laughs> on the treadmill on the bus. That's, that's, uh, that's probably not even the weirdest thing. I remember uh, one day coming back, it was coming back to school, and like me and Adam were trying, uh, it was just when I was doing tech, and like me and Adam had like, carried one of my, like the table I'd made in tech mm. onto the number 11 mm. bus, and some guy was trying to buy it off me. Hi. I was like, much, much you want for that, so much you want. I think he was all with Alzheimer's. Yeah, so I didn't tell him it, but he was pure trying to haggle with me for this table, and I was like, I no. I was like, no, I've just made this, made this with my fair hands. I was like, back off, you old prick. <laughs> but, uh, but I think I was saying, you know, like, like the night bus now is up in Glasgow, that's the, kind of, that's the one to be. Um, and I was saying, uh, the, the one that went to Edinburgh after a night out, um, you know, there was folk having like an after party and that through in Edinburgh, like that one through. And uh, I thought, what was that place? NY Slice. I don't know if anybody's been to it in Glasgow, but it was a banging pizza. And I got a full hang, big fat 16 inch. I was never going to eat it all. And I got in the bus and I fell asleep. And I think I woke up halfway through in some industrial estate. And there's this guy just rummaging and he's got his big hand right in my pizza, just fiddling a bit with it. Just like, ah, <laughs> yeah, mate, can I get a slice? And I'm like, mate, you've already also got a slice in your hand right now, didn't you? So you're just waiting. <laughs> you're just raising up. I woke up. Uh, <laughs> he's I, he's like, I, exactly. He's like, can I get a slice, mate? I'm like, no, I can get yourself the fuck, mate. And then yeah, I'm like, I, I, I'm sitting saying as if it was no accent, like Ayrshire, but it was proper Edinburgh or Edinburgh or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, like Chukta, the Chukta accent. I mean, you're, you're quite good at doing accents, but um, I'm not. I can't even order a drink in Glasgow, mate. I think, it, I, think I was in the garage once and it took me like 12 attempts to order a vodka coke. Oh, really? Uh, uh, I don't know, but we can't understand you, Chuck does in inertia. Because obviously I've moved to Dumbarton and that's something I get all the time. Well, most folk don't know half the words I say. Like, it's even I say words like gads, gads or right. chuggy. Like, see chuggy? Nobody knows chuggy. Right. They call it chungy. Right. Chungy? I know that. Fuck off. Folk, folk, I thought there was folk in here. When I first started college, there was folk calling it chuddy. Chuddy? Oh, I've heard chuddy, aye. That's that's that, mate, where's that comfy? Where's it, where does the D come from in chewing gum? Aye, I think, that, I think that's quite an English expression as well. I think English say... It's all South Fair, sir, mate. It's all South Fair, sir. Weird those. Aye. East Fair, sir, as well. It seemed to like it. If, if you're North Fair, North Fair, sir, you're a bit weird. If you're, that's, that's just my opinion, because North Fair, sir, is one of the only all right ones. The rest is like the Hills of Ice. See, when you go out to Moncton and... Uh, yeah, I walk in Moncton, just calm down a bit. Just watch where you're, watch where you're treading, mate. Just watch, right? Oh, drunken. Close allies. You go to drunken? Drunken. No, mate, don't go. I don't venture there. You know why I go there? <laughs> My dad used to work in drunken. Well, uh, and some of the stories he would tell you about the place, it was it was like getting back to Belfast in the, before the troubles. Oh, was that? I tell you, man. Bel- Belfast is a scary place, mate, honestly. I went, nah, over there, went, over, went over there a couple of years ago for work, man. And you're know, walking like down the street. No, so it's one street, so also Union Jacks and all the rest of it, and the next street's just oh, plain yeah. nothing there. And the next street against all Union Jacks and the rest, and you're just like, oh. if you walk through the wrong street and see the wrong thing. Uh, so, sorry, guys, if it looks like we cut, I cut Ross off mid sentence. We, we got a phone call from Ewan, who's supposed to, who's supposed to be doing the podcast tonight. Uh, he said he was coming on, but I think he's having a wee bit of. A wee bit of technical difficulties because he's not been able to get on yet, so he may or may not join us halfway through the podcast. So you'll uh, know if he joins, mate. You'll know if he joins. You'll know if he joins. So keep your eyes peeled for the carnage that may unfold in the next the next wee while. So we'll ta- we'll, co- we'll come back because we're talking about uh, the number eleven bus, uh, the number eleven bus service that me and Ross used to get as children. Anyone from the Ayrshire area will know exactly that is the bus. That we talk about in the kind of mystique that is the number eleven bus. I think I think when you try and explain it to people that are only from Ayrshire, they don't believe it actually exists. It's a bit like it was a big part of our childhood, wasn't it? I part of our childhood. Because I, I remember I get threatened with a knife on that bus. Uh, I was fourteen or so. I was at fourteen or fifteen. Uh, and I was coming back. I was coming back to my girlfriend's at the time, so I was coming back for Stevenson. Uh, and that, this was like this was a weekday, 
So like you don't really expect much on a weekday. You know it's going to be a wee bit hectic, That's but no, no knives at dawn. And so we got up and there was this I went upstairs and there was this, you know, you know the tight, big fat bald cunt sitting there with his leg half the way out the aisle, and I tried to like, step over it. I like, bumped into him. I was I remember I'm 14, 15 at this point. And I got to say, oh sorry, and he got the cunt just looked at me and went, What the fuck are you doing? Well, that, like trying to look what cunt look like Phil Mitchell. But do you know what yeah. I mean? I was at uh, uh, and then he's trying to act it to 14 year olds on the bus. So I was, but away for, away for that, the new. But he was sitting next to this guy, right? Uh, he kept asking the guy what team he supports. He was adamant he wanted to know. Uh, and the guy said Celtic. And this oh. guy, he was a Rangers fan. So he's getting it. Oh, you think Celtic are gangsters? And, all that. and he's getting this guy like, a lot of shit beside him. Oh. And the guy gets up, moves away. And then like, I think I'm sitting, and the guy must be sitting in the guy's fucking tunnel vision. So he's, he's steaming, I think he, to be fair, I think he was at his pal's funeral. So he must have been a bit Jesus of a bad... Christ, man. <laughs> it was a bad day when you're getting the number 11 bus to a funeral, isn't it? Mate? Oh, he was coming oh, back. Oh, uh, so the funeral during the day, and I think they were in somewhere in Cowinan for the wake. Uh, oh, so, right, okay. so he was there, and he was on the bus, and he caught me in his vision, uh, and then came up and tried to talk to me, and he was he was asking me about Team Asa and I was like, ah, I wasn't answering them sort of thing and he was getting me kind of ratty so I just kind of said Celtic and he was kind of getting me the same kind of shit he was getting that guy right. and I was a bit like as a young uh, a younger boy I was a bit more lippy the mum I was a bit more <laughs> oh, we all know that mate we all know that definitely. I was a bit more maybe not as wise with my words as we should say and I must have said something probably about the guy's hair or lack of it uh, <laughs> it seemed to provoke a reaction <laughs> Uh, which resulted in him getting a Swiss Army knife with his fucking soak, like ah. Rambo. Uh, and also thought there that... was enough hope in that casket, didn't they? <laughs> well, fucking... <laughs> there was more space in there for another body. I'm getting this. Aye, aye. He's like trying to threaten me with this knife, man. I was, I'm not gonna lie. I was about fucking, about fucking fear. I was, I was like, shit. I'm actually gonna get fucking stabbed. Aye. Uh, but like, like, you're, like you were saying before, mate. Sorry to interrupt you, like. If you didn't know, basically after seven o'clock was like the curfew when you didn't go in the number eleven because that's when it changed for a, a double decker and you could kind of hide to so not cases upstairs to like downstairs. Sorry, it changed to a single decker after seven o'clock and that was you. You were mixed in with all the scum. Do you mean that you, I, you were in about it? But this was back before they even done that, so it was kind of I took my life into my own hands going upstairs, is what my parents told me when I <laughs> relayed the scenario to them when I get home or whatever. You shouldn't be sitting upstairs in the bus then. They're like, you know, you know what happens in the upstairs of the bus. <laughs> like, you sit downstairs next to the driver. <laughs> I mean, uh, I never sat in that seat. I mean, I can't remember what I was. I think, God, this is about 10 years ago. That's my one. My son was got a story as yours. It's quite a quick one. But I was on the bus coming back to the phone and there was some, a couple of guys sitting behind me. And I got off the bus and I was downstairs just to get off, whatever. And I put my hood up and an egg fell out of my hood and landed in my shoes. And it went over my shoes and I was raging. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my that's my story. <laughs> that's also football put, put an egg in my hood, <laughs> That's quite a good one, to be fair. I'd never thought about day someday. That's I, excellent. I think it was a new set of like, high tops I got man fresh, fresh crepes down. Oh, like, hey. right over the top of Straight out of J D. Oh fresh man. Out, 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 the, out the January sales up at the, the one in Glasgow, mate. You, you know the best, the best of the gear. Oh, yeah, that's a ceremony take. It was a, I can't remember now, man. A oh, big, pure, like, oh, man, honestly, I, I, I bet I've still got them somewhere. I'll probably hide in the back of my cupboard up the stairs somewhere. But it was really big, on blue, them. big blue sort of sliders. Big, you know, big moon boots, man, honestly. Get them stuck on the now. I could be like my work of steel toe caps, honestly. They're big monsters. I remember one of the best bits, say, advice I ever got in my life was probably on the number 11 bus. It was one of the times I was coming home from school, actually, uh, and a gentleman was kind of, he was chatting, he was chatting away to me, him and his buddy, uh, and one of the best, this bit of advice will stick with me for the rest of my life, he said to me, if anyone ever gives you any hassle in life, just stick the heat in them. And he's like, nobody will get up when you stick the heat in them. I don't know if the guy was implying I've got a huge heat, or if that's just... <laughs> I'll tell you about that, mate. I'll tell you about that, kids. If it's just a rule, a, a rule of thumb that nobody gets up for being headbutted, but no, that was his words of wisdom, his perils, if you will, uh, to me on that bus. If anybody gives you any hassle, just stick the heat in them because they will only get back up 
Well, it's a good thing you're living in Barton room, mate, because that must come in quite handy. <laughs> the bar. Walk, walk out the front door, the postman's there, you're like, ah. Oh. Oh. The Barton's actually, it's, it's been kind to me. <laughs> you've, not the, the least. you've not got the number 11 bus. I, unfortunately, don't do details. Uh, but never know, man. Sometimes you, you treated yourself and you go to the X11 and you go on with all the grannies and all that stuff, and that was a, that was a right delight, that sort of way. Well, one of the last times I got the X11, actually, uh, it was folk up the back of the bus. Uh, I don't really like to say their names online. Because uh, <laughs> it would just... I know I don't want to say their names either, mate. <laughs> it, would just call it, it would just cause absolute chaos, right, if I named these cunts online. There's but, a name Rain Wedding. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll tell you. So I'll, I know. <laughs> so I know. I'll tell you. <laughs> right, so essentially, like, these guys were sitting up the back, uh, uh, and they were tanning. Like, this, I just, I think I just finished work, uh, so they were tanning like fucking Strombo or something at the back of the uh, bus, uh, and started trying to give me abuse for something that had apparently happened about fucking five years ago. Something I'd put in Facebook. Yeah, that was the last time I was on that X11. Well, one of the last times I used to get him for work, and I was, cause I, was, I was just complex with the whole kind of situation. Because I go on the bus, seen them up the back, didn't think anything there. Uh, next thing you know, they're shouting about something I'd wrote on Facebook five years ago. I was like, I, was like, I get to fuck. <laughs> There's about fucking five, there was about five of them rolling about the back. They were kind of just fucking free in the, free in the afternoon. I'm like, they fuck off. They well for themselves, weren't they? I I'm not doing that. Mate, oh, it's, it's not even a love and so this is just, like, honestly, this isn't even funny to folk in the podcast, right? I just want to vent this out, because I think it's been building up inside me, right? See the 585? Mate, see the 585? Fucking weirdos on that 585. That's all I want to say. It's essentially the big of us, mate. It's, 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 it's the number 12 extended. That's what it is. Um, I, I was getting it to air today, my anchor was doing like, my practical test, sorry, my, my theory test for my driver's license, and... No, I'm just sitting there on my earphones in, doing a wee app on my phone, trying to study, trying to study, try panicking. I've already failed it twice before. And next, I've just got a guy tapping my shoulder every two seconds, like saying, what are you up to, mate? How are you doing? And all that stuff. What are you doing today? And I'm just sitting there, I'm trying to study for my hanging exam. I was like, fuck's sake, fuck's sake. Whole way, whole way. And he starts giving me the whole kind of, oh, why are you being rude, mate? You want to just, you know, want to talk to me or something like that? And then he comes down and tries to sit next to you and all that stuff. And you've got a bag in the seat and all that. And you're just like, oh, what are you meant to do? I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think. I think kind of public transports the time I've been most kind of grateful for COVID. Just for the next day. But it always, oh, it always right. happens, man. It's always me. See, even when you have your bag in the seat, some, there's like a four seater, some arsehole comes mm. sits right next to you. And was, the whole carriage is fucking dead. It's like when you're doing a fish, mate, isn't it? And then you're, you know, and somebody comes and sits, stands right next to you. You could <laughs> sit next to you. When they're standing right next to you, and you're, you're just standing there, just looking down at your wallet, and you're just thinking, mate, come on. I do say. I go by the two year rhino rule. A two, aye, aye. Uh, like you get one, then there's a gap, and then you go in, then there's a gap, then you go in, then there's a gap. Uh, I think that's the code, that should be the code of conduct, but a lot of folk don't follow that. A lot of folk buy stand next to you and have a chat, you know. Uh, <laughs> I think the only time you can break that rule, mate, is if it's a night out and the toilet's packed. Aye. Yeah, right, mate, has, has to be done, mate. Brown's kind of dead in about this, mate. I'll close my eyes, I'll just stand there like that. Promise I'm all looking. <laughs> Aye, when you're at, you're at a night out and the line for the cubicle is longer than the line for the urinal. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I've, got a good, I've got a good story for a night out. Oh, man, we were like 17. I don't know. Did you ever go to Largs? There's a, there's a nightclub called Fiddlers and Oceans. I, I've uh, heard of Fiddlers, aye. Uh, up Fids, finger the kids, as I like to call it. Uh, bleep that bit out. Um, but the, the, what was it? Uh, it was like proper underage kind of stuff used to get in. I mean, I went in when I was like 16 and the guy was like, oh, can I see your ID? You just give me your bank card. And it was just because the police were sitting outside that just made it look as if they're IDing you. And we hey. were in there one night and there was this lass I used to work with at the, the Hydro and she was in and she was absolutely steaming, mate. And like, Ken, the wee Daryl Burns, he was, like, to da- he was trying to dance and they had like a camera that videoed the dance floor. So we were sitting watching it on the screen. And uh, he's like dancing and he goes in to try and kiss her. And he goes to kiss her and she just goes like that. Vroom, straight, straight, <laughs> straight back and her back, right? Exactly. <laughs> and, and I was like that. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> so like he fucks off. She's trying to go full Neo for the Matrix and fucks her. <laughs> I, but then, then he leaned, mate, just went full plank. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she, 
I big uh, I'll say his name because I'm sure they're not too back to you. Big old Liam McConnell comes uh, yeah. running over. Yeah, I knew you were going to see him. I don't know why. I just knew that was going to be the name of your name. <laughs> Liam. Only joking, Liam. Don't kill me. Uh, but uh, he comes running over and picks up and all that. And then I mean, mean big man. Go into oh, oh exactly. That smell of corn here. Does my sleeve smell nice? And uh, <laughs> me, and big, me and Big Matthew went into the toilet and she's standing there and she had one, this is the, the bit when you're talking about toilets, she had her leg up in like the trough and uh-huh. she had her skirt put, she had her skirt put with her and she's just gone for it and she's just standing looking at me and Matthew like, what? It's, it's a bad clip to get into, isn't it? No fair sure, mate, no fair sure. Best place in the world. I know, we were, I know we were making a bit of a joke about it there, but you get some seedy motherfuckers. At night, Cubs, man, and I think they just fail in real like that. It's quite, it's pish. I would go into a serious topic now about the, uh, like I was saying earlier on about, Be- oh, no, I think I said to you earlier on about fucking, no, we were talking about our good friend Greg, who's an international spa, uh, man of mystery. But, um, aye, aye, aye. He, aye, like you're saying about the kind of, uh, what's it called, getting spiked thing on stuff. I don't know if you ever have been, but I think I've been spiked the night before, but I, just, I, just, I can't understand the, the sensation of wanting to do it to somebody, you know. To be honest, I know that's just somebody that's spiked me, I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I had a good night, right? But I felt shit the next day. <laughs> they asking me free drugs. What I'm saying. I think I think it was in thing as well. I think it was in Taylor's, which makes sense. Oh, mate, aye, some cunts definitely spike chain tails. <laughs> aye, adds up. <laughs> aye. Men, it's men, though, because you do, you do hear about it a lot happening to guys. I think folk just aye. pop something in their drink as a bit of a laugh. And you're like, you're a bit like, come on to fuck, mate. It's, it's as though somebody pisses you off or somebody's trying to talk to a girl that you're talking to. Do you know what I mean? You just kind of stick it in or whatever. It, uh, it's dangerous. It's, da- say? it's dangerous as well, man, because a lot of boys know. Their work drug tests them. Aye. So I've, I've heard about that folk at work at uh, one of the guys I know he works for B, I think it's PAE he works for. Aye. The David Plains as well. And he gets he gets drug tested at his work. Something like that, he would get sacked for if you work for the police. Drug test sacked. Mal work, they claimed they drug tested you, but I never had to complete a drug test in my life, I think. 90% of your office would probably have failed. I would be the only one to pass. Of course, mate. Best yep. employee, employee of the month here. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm the same my work, mate. But they say they, they, drug te- they drug test you when you started, and then they say they can do them randomly, but I've been in there five years, mate, and I've never seen anybody get a drug test in there. That that could be it then, because the guy, the guy that I knew, he was failing you to the place, so he might, I think he was only in there a couple of months, so he had maybe mm. just done his first one and then Gets the fear for the rest of his employment <laughs> that he thinks he's got to get it every week. Yeah. Uh, they, um, I was going to say, I don't know if you ever talk about TV shows. Did you see that Serpent? Have you watched that? No, I've not watched that yet. You need to watch it. I mean, that's cracking. But that's kind of like, it kind of just reminds me of that when you're just talking about the kind of uh, spiking people and all that. Yeah. Uh, but back then, all that stuff, like, you know, the guys just goes around spiking everything and basically abducting them, taking all their money and then killing them and just like burying them and all that stuff. And that's pretty fucked up. Because I'd heard lots of, uh, Lots of stories, but that's the kind of shit that happens in Amsterdam. What kind of speak you? All that, but see, I went. Amst- see, I went to Amsterdam. Like, I know the hookers over there are persistent, but nothing, <laughs> nothing has holds a candle to the coke dealers over there. Like they um, do not fuck off. But <laughs> our our hotel was in the red light district, right? Uh, yeah. So whenever we were going out, you would have about six of them. But they would just follow you about all night and they'd be oh, you, you want me a bit of this, you want me a bit of this. And it's mm. like, mate, it's like, mate, no, I don't take it. And then you'd have to, you get to the stage, you have to tell them to fuck off. You have to get a wee bit. Either. You have to peacock a wee bit. And then just hope they've no got a, a squad of their heavies around the corner. Well, that, um, when I was there, I booked a funny story. I don't I think I've told you before, but I booked a holiday Amsterdam by myself when I was in a work night out and I was steaming. Um, I booked it in like, the December and I booked it for the March. But I was getting my hair cut in like January and I just was sitting going through my emails or something like that and I just seen it and it was just like the confirmation email saying like, congratulations, your flight to Amsterdam has been booked or whatever. And I was like, you're fucking having a laugh. So 
I booked a hotel, hotel. I couldn't cancel the flights. I paid like 80 quid for flights. And I thought, fuck, I'll just go over. So I went over and stayed in a hostel and that by myself. And hey. uh, I was cracking me, honestly. She's on the phone. You mean just stay in the hostel and that? Oh, some weird hey. thing. Um, I, there was one of the, these two American boys, and it was one of their birthdays last night. Out. And we went out, and like, it was like someone that me and this guy, David, and all the other boys, but the other ones were only finishing their drinks. So me and David were like, tanning nails and all that stuff. And it got to the end of the night, about three, four in the morning. It's just me and him left. And we ended up getting a taxi back to the, ho- the hostel, and I just remember getting in my room feeling sick. And I remember I, w- I blacked out, and I woke up uh, in the bathroom, and literally, mate, this, hopefully you're not screaming to the folk listening, but I literally woke up in a pool of my own sick. Like, quite literally, the whole floor of the bathroom, it was like a wet room, was just sick. And my <laughs> phone my phone, and my earphones and my wallet were all in the toilet. And I was, oh, lying, in, and I was lying in the scud. Ah, fuck. So, so, so take what you want from that because that might be a bit. <laughs> I might know feel that. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody might have put me there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, wait, that, was it that, was, that is that's top top three hangovers that day. That next day, top three. Was your nerves still the next day? <laughs> uh, I don't know, mate. I just I can't remember now. I think my whole, my whole body was that numb. I couldn't feel it. Did you not get the smell of poppers at your head? <laughs> <laughs> nah, mate. I just had some ginger sh- shower gel that I seem to remember having, and I feel just cleansed myself with that, and I felt fresh as. And that's about it. I got, I some, la- some 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 lassie came in while I was in the shower. I don't know why, but also I hadn't cleaned up the sick at this point, and I'm standing there in the shower, just cleaning myself, and it just walks in. There's just the floors just covered in sick. <laughs> oh no! So, straight back out. Is that a communal bathroom, eh? Ah, it was like six in the one room. Oh fuck. So, so they, they weren't that big a fan of me after the rest of the, the time I was there. I don't but Imagine when them woke up in the middle of the night, Boston. Mate, that could have happened. Have to I'd, I'd have just been passed it. But they, it was probably why I put your phone in this toilet. <laughs> I was <laughs> shivering, man. Just, just got to piss, flush, phone in there. You can get I was raging because like, my earphones were at the bottom, but my phone, I see my wallet, it kind of like fell sideways, so it kind of blocked. But kind of, it, it, it stopped itself from going in the water, but then right. my phone had fell on top of that. So my phone and my wallet were right, but the earphones didn't make it up, unfortunately. Nah, you yeah, to... would just be flushing, <laughs> you would just, you'd accept the collateral, you would just flush it. You go to the earth, mind you, that flight, how many earphones? That, that's the thing, mate. I, I, mean, I think I spent, I must have spent 20 quid in like the cheapest pair of earphones in the center of Amsterdam. So I mean, like, once you'd pay like a pound shop, I must have spent like 20 quid to try and get up here because nobody else out in it. Mate, mate, that was at me in Prague. Like my my earphones broke in the plane. Got to Prague, right? And I spent uh, one of my last days. I spent eighty percent of the day walking about Prague looking for headphones uh, for an iPhone. Could have got them fucking anywhere. That's right. It's shite, isn't it? You can't uh, find it. It's crazy. Anywhere. We're in the Apple shop and everything. They didn't sell the ones I wanted. Huh? Mine's is uh, I say a newer iPhone. That's like the XR I've got. So it's the one with the kind of. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have the headphone jack, but... I it's only got that. I couldn't get them. The only ones I could get was the... But the... The kind of thick ones like that. Mm. Well, it's like a stick that you get. I was... I, I just had to buy them in the airport. About £30 odd pound it cost me. Oh, just had, Not just lost, about six songs. Um, I'm trying to think of any other uh, whole other stuff that's happened to me. Uh... Just good places like me. I said, when I went to Prague, I know I've seen you're talking about the guys trying to sell you drugs and all that. I remember I, uh, I was walking back to the hotel. I think we, were, we had an Airbnb and I got lost. And now you've got the kind of big square in the centre with like the fountain and the, the church. All right. and all that, like, um, I kept walk, I kept, I kept get lost. I was steaming and I just kept walking, running, and walking, and running. And you get drug dealers every time kept coming up to me going, like, You lost, big man. You you want to you want left home and all this. And you're just like, oh, you know, I said, what were you getting him, son? I was raging, but my chicken nuggets were getting cold, so I kind of thought about it. <laughs> I, I, one of the times I was in Prague, I was I was over with Susanna, and Susanna is Polish, so she she knows the uh, Eastern European uh, etiquette quite well. And apparently, going by her, singing in the street, steaming, doesn't get in too well with them. <laughs> no. I, I think we came out of a bar, and Celtic were playing, and I was steaming. I was singing about Kieran Tierney uh, in the street. And oh, you, 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 don't do, you don't do that anymore, mate. 
Uh, thing about her uh, in the video. She, she was going, she was going mental. She was at Martin. See if you don't stop, you're going to end up in a prag jail. And she's like, yeah. probably not get back out. She's done in the jail. I was at gear into your name. Pure steaming, no care, and swinging my jumper about. She's like, up the road. She's, uh, she's, for, she's for Poland, which is essentially right next door, and she's uh, it's the exact same in Poland. Uh, we, uh, we went to Krakow when it was 20, 2019 in the summer, and um, I, I mean, I was kind of the same. Like, I, it's just a bit of a, so you kind of like, went out the city centre a bit further on that stuff. It was just a bit sketchy, and I'm like, you just can't, like, you don't know what, you don't know what to fuck around over there, man. And even going in the supermarket and buying, like, a, a bit of cheese or something like that, man, you're just thinking, she's probably got a gun or behind the counter. I kicked the Australian guy into a bin lorry because he's pissing me off. <laughs> Why? That was, was, oh, because like, we were in this pub crawl and he was like, this bin lorry's gone past and he jumped up in the back of it and he's acting all big boys and he's like sitting there like, wait, 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 come over, he's singing, whatever. So I jumped up, obviously being the British Muay Thai champion, if you didn't know, and uh, <laughs> kind, of, kind of flat, I don't even say fly kicked him, but just fucking kicked him in the chest, man. He just goes like that. Kicked him. Straight into the straight eye heater, <laughs> fly heater, mm. uh, straight into the straight into the bin boy, man. I just fucking I just dived into like the group of my pals and that and just hid and he could just he'd get back out and he was absolutely fuming. Um I <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that to be honest. It's just been a bit of a dick, but I fuck it, it happens, especially when you're especially when you're mad with it abroad. We've all been there. So I remember going to like, Amsterdam, we went like a kind of family holiday to Amsterdam, not at, not at me, my mom, my dad. I let me me and my cousins we went to Amsterdam. That was probably uh that was the first experience I'd ever had at the place and it was insane to say the least, because they told me we were staying in the red light, the red light district, right? And I didn't understand what the red light district was. And oh. every day at work was saying, Are, are you gonna go to the red light district? And I was like, I was like, No, it's no my scene, I'm not into hookers, and they were like ah, they were trying to explain to me what Red Light District was, but in my head, I thought it was an alley with brothels. I didn't know it was a big tourist attraction that had pubs, uh, and these women are like coming out of Wendy's, like, like a house. Because it was mad. It was mad, it was mad as shit. I'm, nuts, man. I'm a wee guy for a Dawson. Don't know, don't know Dutch culture. I'm going to try and get my breakfast at 12 o'clock, just landed. Walked, uh. walked missions. Uh, get my breath, try try walk, get my breakfast, and this woman's trying to pull me on a window. And I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit fear. I was, I was, I was like, this is, this is too much for me. Like, although I take the title as best looking man on YouTube, oh, I'm, not I'm, used, not. I'm not used to women grabbing me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they could grab you now, I'm sure they would. Reach for the screen and get you. <laughs> it, was, it was fucking, fucking See, calm. Um, I, I was going to say that, I completely forget. You're talking about Amsterdam, mate. I, I mean, me and, uh, just a story about me going over there. Me and Ben went over for my birthday. Uh, that's again, end of, end of 2019. Uh, and the, the night before, we went out in Edinburgh, we got steaming, and our flight was like six o'clock in the morning. But you know what it's like? You say, oh, what? The road for nine o'clock, whatever. So we're out to about half Hi. one, up the road, and... I fucking woke up in the morning. But see, see weather spins. You get like the. This has gone a bit weird in the story, right? <laughs> see weather spins. They do like a chicken, a barbecue chicken pizza. Right, I, mean, I, right. I, I, I don't know, but see the barbecue sauce, mate. It goes right through me. All right. That's the way possible what it does. So the next morning you wake up for this flight. You're feeling like bits. I mean, your body's falling to bits. We get through security and everything, and then he jumps on the flight, and I'm sitting in the middle seat. With my knees rammed right up against the seat. I've got Ben next to me. He's and hung over then she's falling about and I got this Australian lassie sitting next to me and she's feet are flying. Oh, I'm, like, oh. I'm like, how did you get for Australia to Edinburgh? <laughs> you're absolutely, you're getting, I'm like, this does not make sense to me. You must have took you're some to go there. <laughs> <laughs> so the plane the plane starts taking off and she's like, what's this noise? What's that noise? And I'm like, hey, did you not fly for Australia to here? Did you swim or something like that? And we take off and I'm kind of falling asleep and kind of it's like when you're kind of, well, I was going to say when you're kind of tall, Mark, I'm not a wee big or anything, but uh, your neck kind of like bends over the back of the seat like that so I'm, sit I'm sitting sleeping with my neck at like a 180 degree angle like that and then next minute there's a there's a wee bit of turbulence and she fucking I was, she fucking like grabbed my arm and ripped my arm off so I like my head goes like that swings right forward and then I smashes off the seat in front of me she's sitting screaming 
But anyway, wakes up, he smashes his head off the fucking window. <laughs> And we're all screaming and shouting and all that stuff. And I'm like, ah! And, I, and then we landed and she was like, ah, oh, thanks very much for that. I'm like, no ball. Like, right, cheers. You just ruined the hole, didn't it? Thanks very much. Uh, that's it. The whole, the whole time's knackered. Because <laughs> oh, I remember, like, when we, were, when we were coming back to Amsterdam, our flight was delayed by, like, three hours. So like, we, were, we were buzzing. We were like, yeah, so that's me our time in the pub. Because we were in this pub called, I think it was the Trinity. The Trinity Bar and the Red Light. Did you ever go in the Black Tiger? Oh, I'm I'm unsure. I can't even Black remember. Ti- Black Tiger had like a had like a big pool table, and it was like you kind of went downstairs. Nah. Did you Did you ever go to the one the Excalibur? Excalibur. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Been on that. Did you go to the toilet? Uh, no comment. Did you get the key? Did you get the key? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fucking amazing. I. <laughs> So we're coming, we're coming back and we're like, yes, flight's delayed, delayed three hours, so we're just, we're just getting on it. We're getting on it and me and my big, me and my big cousin Lee are absolutely steaming. Because like my cousin Cameron, he was he was drinking a wee bit, but he stopped. And like my cousin yeah. my cousin Jamie and our mate Jonesy, they completely stopped. They were like, I'll be the way better off. And me and Lee are like, ah. we, are, we are the youngest, we are like, we are like uh, the young bulls. So we are like, ah, fuck it, Karen, pints, pints, pints. Next thing you know, we're on the train, like in the middle of Amsterdam, we're in we're this train going to the airport and me and my cousin we are singing fucking fire mod songs. And I'm like, how we didn't get killed? I don't know. But I think we are just a couple of wrong people on that train away for a knife in. Because <laughs> I've met Ajax fans. They're not nice. Well, mate, remember the last time Ajax played Celtic? And they're sitting in the Crystal Palace in Glasgow, mate, and next minute the fucking windows all get turned. That was a good party, aye. Aye, because me and Andy never in. We're in aye. there just, just chilling, having a pint. Everything's good, I'm... 19, fucking steaming. Next huh. thing you know, you just hear boom, boom at the window. Fuck, comes getting battered with crowbars and all that. And it's like, you're just window. sitting there like, mate, I'm just trying to have a pint. I want, John, having a pint, going to watch the football, mate. I'm not in the mood for this. <laughs> that was that was my exact reaction. I get that. I get that. And seeing like nights out, mate, also, I'm sure I'm probably a bit too old as folk down there, but the, the garage night probably in Glasgow, is, that's where that's the place to be. But see the amount of folk in there that try to Try to start on you, and you're just standing there with your pint, just like, mate, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm in the mood for fighting. I'm in the capability to fight you. I'm steaming. Have a good night, big man. Do you know what I mean? Um, Some picture of your belt on your phone. <laughs> that's it. Isn't it? <laughs> you, you don't want that sauce, mate. I, I only go, I only go out in Halloween so I can dress up as me. <laughs> Stick my belt on me. That's that. Um, you may, you mentioned something quite. Quite interesting that actually when you were saying about us being a bit older now than like we're 23, um oh. 24 in a couple of months. So even the short distance for when we were younger, things have changed fucking massively. Like oh mate, definitely. One of the big one of the big things I kind of like to get your opinion on us a wee bit is OnlyFans. Oh, controversial, mate. I might have to call it here. Mate, it's, <laughs> I must admit, see if I was younger, if I was 15, 16. Single, I'd have no money in my bank. <laughs> I'd be getting these women all my dollar. I, I, I was going to say you've got a cracking pair of fits, Martin. I thought you were going to say. <laughs> oh, mate, I would... Guys don't really seem to do that well on it. Must be because oh, Bobby's. Must be because Bobby's are ugly. Comment. Bobby's are ugly. We spoke about that earlier. Right there. We're talking about <laughs> ugly Bobby's. That's it. They're, they're not attractive. Birds don't want to see it. The guys no, want to see it. I don't, I don't know what your girlfriend that said. So I don't know like, if any, girl, any folks' girlfriend said it was pretty, but to all the guys out there, if there's any younger guys listening, dick pics only the one, mate. Hi, <laughs> nobody, nobody wants a dick pic. <laughs> if your girlfriend says it's nice, she's lying. She's making you, try, try you feel better. Hi, <laughs> just, just see that when they say size doesn't matter, they're lying. You're the best you ever had, they're lying. <laughs> 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 that's, what, that's, that's what they do. They lie. They lie to us about these wee things to make us feel better because they're great people. We all love women. It's all about golf, mate. Them. That's all it matters. It's not about them. It's about golf. Because that was the thing. There was that guy, Stephen Bear. Um, he got done He got done for his only fans because he was videotaping women uh, with his home security cameras. Right. Uh, he was videoing them and putting them on there without their consent. And I think what, he's, what do you mean? Just, like, just videos of them coming? Like, what was he doing? Like, just... He was uh, pumping them. So I basically, he was going with this woman. He was going with this lassie. 
Uh, Georgia Harrison, she, she was on Love Island and all that, so she's quite well known. Oh, yeah, uh, I can't she's, that. A, she's like a social media influencer, and like he was he was having her at his house, he was like shagging her, and he's got like cameras, and he's mm. house, like, we all, we've all got cameras in our house, I've got a dog camera there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, I've actually got a camera here. <laughs> aye, I've got one as well. See, see that? That's a second, so I can point it out. Oh. Oh. I don't know if you've got it. It might be the same one we've got. Mine just sits there. We use that's good. That's good if somebody breaks into your room and your house and comes and sits and watches the telly. No, No, but uh, just it's fine. Nobody breaks into your house. Get two big dogs. Bottom, mate. You've got two big dogs. Is that right? They'll they'll see Ronnie and shit them, so they'll see it. It's fine. The dog's trained the dog's trained to be flying heels and all. He's fine, he's fine. I know MD comes into our house, he's got, he's got my back. The border collie, on the other hand, he's a bit of a shitbag, so he's, he doesn't he does fill me with joy. But the same, the Newfoundland, I've got, I've got every my, faith. My, my, my biggest one, Colin, he, he only attacks guys. So hey. if, a woman, if a woman burglar comes into my house, I'm fucked. fucked. <laughs> I'm fucked. <So. laughs> There'll be a queue of women. <laughs> You'll know the right. Uh, they're not, not the right type. <laughs> I know. A bunch of, a bunch of ruffians trying to get into uh, your, your good China. <laughs> I mean, actually. <laughs> good China right there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the, ca- the camera's right above the good China. Huh? <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's it. So, you'll be fucked if you try to steal out the cameras right there. <laughs> the cameras got them. You've, knew, you've now showed them where the cameras, where the good China is. So they'll be. Oh, I mean, I, I think that camera was like ten pound off of eBay, because my. So um, I don't think it, it probably doesn't work. It's probably mate, just what. Like, it's fine. It was came. Gun. It was came through with my Kindle. So saying, Danger Dougie's making a making some kind of contraption. <laughs> about it. Uh, what was your point? Sorry about OnlyFans. Aye, we'll talk a wee bit about OnlyFans because that's one of the major differences when we were we. I remember when I was. Younger, we didn't even have Snapchat. Mate, so, make a sense so old, mate. <laughs> I, I think Snapchat only started really working when I was in, I was in fourth or fifth year. I don't at school. I I don't, Twenty thirteen, mate. I seem to remember. I think I, I think I'd would been, I'd been, I'd been fifth year. I think I was out of my prime a wee bit. The um the the beard wasn't quite there. Oh, yours wasn't. So yours is better than mine. Mine's a better. I don't know about pubes. I mean, when we were younger, we used to have to graph folk in MSN. That was a fucking ball. Do you ever graph somebody in Bebo? Uh, you're, you're, <laughs> you're sitting there. I mean, I love... You're, sit, you're sitting there trying to graph them. They're just sitting watching YouTube videos and you're sitting nudging them. Ah, oh, I mean, I, I used to do my fucking head in. So I used to play 8-ball pool on my PC at home. And yeah. I, was, I used to get folk nudging me all the time. But in answers to the conversations, I didn't know what happened. Uh, I'm trying to play 8-ball pool and my screen's gone like that. The thing, uh, thing I was going to say was, I feel like see now compared to when we were younger, I feel like um, like see just kind of porn and just kind of nudity and all that kind of stuff. I feel like it's just so easily available. Um, so you're kind of saying about only fans and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just feel like see now, like everything is sexualized. Do you know I mean, even everything's just. I, I, I'm not like I'm, a, I'm an old guy and that kind of stuff. But do you know I mean, I just feel like every time you turn the telly on or whatever, I watch some video on YouTube. It's some kind of or some kind of nudity in it, you know. I and I think I think it's a bit it's, it's a bit hard for I think it's hard I think it's a bit hard to raise a daughter in this kind of day and age because there's, there's so many fucking weirdos out there bombarding young women for pictures and I get it can be a bit uh, it can be a bit hard to say no to some guys especially in and it's that way as well some lasses might know have a lot of money and they're only way to gain money is through OnlyFans. Same way for a lot of guys nowadays, the only way they can gain money is through fucking drug dealing. Well, but, and then you, you see, sorry, it's not a drug dealer, mate, but then you see like in the case, I'm not too sure about the kind of women's side of things, but you see in a lot of cases of guys then get themselves into a bit of a hole and, you know, with, with money and all that kind of stuff with drug dealing and then they end up, that's how you get quite a lot of male suicides. I, right, I, right, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's a, bit, it's a bit fucking brutal, and I think the times that we live in now with COVID and mass redundancies, we're kind of talking about this off air, uh, mm-hmm. the amount of redundancies that we're seeing, I think it's just... Because I've definitely I've definitely seen a spike in the amount of, the amount of women that are that are selling their images, and some of them some of them make great money, some of them make fantastic money, some of them are on grands a week, 
And well, that's like I said, mate, the amount of folks like, I don't know, like, I'm not going to name names all but you know people like you go on their Instagrams and you see it in their bio, yeah. like all their links and all that kind of stuff, do you know what I mean? You're just like, but you don't know how that's affecting their mental health as much as they're maybe making money, but see, maybe 20, 30 years down the line, do you know what I mean? Are they going to come to regret that? I, I don't know. It's, at the end of the day, it's, it's somebody else's body into it and that's what they want to do it, so. And it's, it's, that, it's that way as well. I think you make a good point. It's uh, women that maybe don't make that amount of money that are doing it. Like, what does yeah. that do with their mental health? Or do they just see themselves as ugly? Uh, and then women... Like, I think it brings a whole level of co- like competitiveness to people. Like, humans are very competitive beings. They're always trying to outdo each other. We were speaking about this a wee bit earlier. We, like cookie shops, like someone puts a deal up, and next thing you know, someone does a deal for a pound less, right? So mm. for exact for example, and but like some some women might do something on OnlyFans that's that they're used to. They like they like doing this kind of thing. And guys pay by guys pay to see it. And then that might push other young women to do things to the same extreme that their body might not be accustomed to or might not be able to do to the same same degree. And lassies end up just pushing themselves to shit that they might they might never have done and just get really uncomfortable because they've now got a barrage of men that have essentially paid for a service for, mm. like, monthly. Aye, and you, you feel like that, that, that kind of becomes your job, doesn't it? Like I said, I don't want to, to all the listeners out there, I don't want to sit and come, like, tell people what they do with their, their body and all that kind of stuff. It's just kind of, we're just kind of making our own our own, own points on it, like, our, our thoughts and that. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, it's your body, do what you want, but... um. Aye, I know what you're saying. That's kind of and 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 like the long term, you know. I I know people Aye. that have uh, have made it, and then they made it for a few months, and then they deleted it because I, I just think I don't know it, how it affected them, maybe their mental health, or they just like they, they felt like they were getting an image, or they were getting an image of them. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't know. And it's it's that it's that way as well. A lot of the time, when you put I mean, when images are out there, although you might have deleted the content. It doesn't necessarily mean everything else in the world has. Like a lot of people take screen records, a lot of people take screenshots, and that stuff then ends up getting passed about. And I think it can be good because you hear about that all the time that, that revenge porn. Hmm. Uh, oh, you start, brought that into law, wasn't it? Aye, because I remember like, I, was, I was growing up as well. Like, that was something that you did hear of a lot. It was like a young lassie would send an send a intimate picture to, another, to a male and he would show his pals. Who would then show everybody in the whole school, and that that lassies then get a reputation. Was well, it- I remember there was one instance. I think it was. I think it was a chemistry class. I don't know if I can't. No, I wasn't in the class, but I heard about it. It was one across all for me. And in one period, like, I think this girl had sent a photo to a guy that night, and he came at school the next day. And he lets this is before like kind of WhatsApp, and I think they literally Bluetoothed it, <laughs> Bluetoothed the photo to everybody or something like that in the class. In the space of like an hour, do you know what I mean? And that was in that class and had it, and everybody went and showed everything. And then, um, I'm also not going to name names of who the people were, but um, I that's what I'm saying. It's like it's like nuts that it was going on back then. And it seems to be more kind of, I don't know, like I wouldn't say accepted, but I don't know, it just seems to be more frequent now. And that's that's it as well. It was a lot harder to do that shit back then. Now it's a lot easier. You just take a screenshot and you send it through Facebook group chats, text group chats, WhatsApp mm. group chats, and that follows. Uh, that follows people about for the rest of their life, and it's quite, yeah, it's quite hard. It's quite must be quite difficult for them, I'd imagine. Mm. I would, um, I, I just thought I said I don't want to hang it too much to kind of people what they can do with their life, but um, it's just funny to look back and kind of think what it was like for your school. Like I remember, um, quite a lot of people in school kind of got bullied. Um, you know, if they were kind of camp or you know gay or whatever, or they hadn't came out kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, when we were like first, second year, especially, whereas, like, see, now if that happened now, you know, you'd be kicked out of school, you know, fucking everything, man, you'd be all over the papers and all the rest of it. You know what I mean, uh, whereas, like, see, now I think, like, it's but also it is more accepted, which is fair enough, which is the way it should be. You know, I mean, if you want to be whoever you want to be, that's what it is, but it's just nuts how, like, literally 10 years ago, if you were in school and came out openly as being gay or, or bisexual or whatever, you were literally getting slaughtered. Aye. No, absolutely, that's a great point, and that's something that I think the younger generation get absolute shit for, and they get called like, the woke generation, they, get, they all get called snowflakes, it's like, it's like nah, it's like hanging out a young folk that fucking kill themselves, 
stop being dicks and fucking yeah. slagging somebody for being gay or being trans or do whatever the fuck they want to do. Let them do what they want to do, man. Yeah. And a lot of people use slurs as well. Like a lot of a lot of racist slurs uh, are ingrained in your vocabulary for a young age. And a lot of time, a lot of time people don't mean it and buy it. Whereas nowadays you say that kind of stuff and folk are pulling them up about it. So folk yeah. are learning a kind of different dialect, which is which is always pretty cool because yeah. you don't know. You don't know about folks' background, your class, you don't know where they come from, who they're fa- what, what kind of family they've got, is et cetera, et cetera. And if folk are making kind of remarks that they might see as an attack on their family, it's it creates problems, it creates a level of unaccept they might feel a level of unacceptance. So that's my whole kind of youth worker persona coming out. That's mate, that's good. You do you do it as a job, mate. Honestly, I'll, I'll start talking about planes in a minute and put everything to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go run to sleep, man. I can remember if you can if you work on planes, you can rim a bathtub. You can tell a bathroom and steal a bath. That's it, isn't it, mate? Aye. If you can it's screw if you can same. screw a nut onto a plane, mate, you can build a kitchen. Aye. That. Not the same. It's not like <laughs> time, man. it's not like it's an actual trade <laughs> for doing kitchens that require a lot of hard work and effort. It's just Aye, it was like my mum mum done that before. We were getting that we were getting a garage built out of my house. And like we kind of done it over lockdown and that still not even finished it. But like she was like to me, can you know just take a week off work and build it? As in like literally dig up the foundations, put down like the concrete slab and everything and all that as if and I'm just like she's like, I bet you fix planes. And I'm like, I but it doesn't mean I can fucking build. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah, no, I'm no, I, I don't remember going in grand designs, Kathleen. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> Uh, you're oh, like, yeah, there's a today. different role for the people that build the planes. Uh-huh. <laughs> but there's, folk, there's construction workers and there's folk that do the stuff that I do. I mean, I'll actually go in with a hammer and just hit bits of metal. Right, make sure it all works. That, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, that's no if, I, if I can withstand a hammer hit, it's no fuck, isn't it? So, <laughs> simple as that. Yeah, there you uh, go. What you know you're safe when you fly with... Airlines, Ross has gave it the magic hammer test. He's, he's, <laughs> he's always got his uh, super glue on him. So the magic touch, mate. If it falls off, it gets super glued. Oh, no. oh, that uh, masking tape you were talking about earlier, really sticky. Well, that's, stuff. That's, I mean, I've got a few rolls out in the cupboard, honestly. See if something breaks in the house, I'm just like, oh, wrap up in tape, all good. <laughs> you um, should have gave that to you when he was uh, sellotaping his headset, do you see? <laughs> yeah, when I got it off me, honestly, it's, it's stupid he'd strong stuff. That, he'd still have that bulb patch. <laughs> like, I, um, even I used it the other week, the other bloody, I can't say it's been but like my door handle, because I've got an old shitty Civic, my door handle on the side of my car, like the actual cable that runs to the lock, snap. So right. I just took, took the door card off, the cable had snapped, so I actually just put two, two bits of table together, this is how good a mechanic I am. Two bits of cable together, wrapped it in that metal foil tape and just injected each side with super glue. And then stuck it in the oven for like half an hour. And it cooked the super glue, stuck it back in the car. Boom. <laughs> Stronger yeah. than ever was before. It all works. The car still mate. drives. That's how you want. Your car still drives. If, if it still works, it still works. But, um, oh, you, there was a point I was going to make because I can't remember. Uh, you were going to say you were talking uh, about stuff. That happens on here. You just you lose track of the, the world. And any the problem is, Martin, I'm sitting, I'm sitting staring at you. And I just can't, unbelie- can't believe how something you are. Well, you don't... You don't win the title of best looking man on YouTube without having a money maker. Like, do you know what I mean? This is why we've got seventy eight subscribers. It's not for the pattern. <laughs> All seventy eight of you out there. Ah, those that whole seventy eight. It's there you go. The, um, it's it's not quite. You've not quite got a UFC fighter on, but here's hoping we can get some some cracking views for the old school the school folk back in St Matthews. <laughs> He's, Here's hoping, man. Aye, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what it does. And this this is your interview to, deter, to determine whether you get back on. If you don't crack oh. a certain amount of views, we never speak to you again. That's how it rolls in podcast game. Uh, I know. I'm sitting, I'm sitting, we're sitting here shitting myself on, just like thinking all we're going to talk about is if you've got an audience sitting and listen to you. But they, um, hey, that's the thing. People listen. People well, you don't saying, expect uh, to listen, uh, listen. And they know. Because <laughs> right, that's, that's the thing. Quite a few folk for school have messaged me and said that they listen to the podcast and I'm like, I got a bit, I got a bit strange out by it because I'm a bit like, I, I can never believe that folk listen to me talking shit for so long. I mean, but, honestly, see, see, see the, first, the, aye, the first like kind of big long podcast you've done that had Napoleon, your dog is Napoleon. Aye. Well, I've seen you before, that's my favourite one I've probably listened to. 
Uh, go back and watch that if you've listened to it. It's absolutely fantastic. But um, just like even I had it on in work, I mean, I just, just stuck that on for two and a half hours, walked away. You know, I probably fucked a few planes in the process. All good. But I had a good time doing it, so. I do not take liability, uh, BAA systems. It's, all, it's not like if I remember rightly, you were sitting talking about how you were going to uh, knock fuck out of Brock Lesnar's daughter or something like that. Or something like that. <laughs> oh, I, 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 was, I was kind of laughing at Brock Lesnar's daughter because she looks at him with tits, which I stand by. That <laughs> is Brock Lesnar with tits. And I know if Brock yeah. Lesnar hears this, he would be very upset about that. But your daughter looks at you with tits. Get over it. Ma- Martin lives in the Martin postcode GA <laughs> something, something, something. <laughs> I've got an angry, I've got an angry man for fucking America swimming out. <laughs> I like a speedboat mate straight over half a dozen. <laughs> He'd probably swim. That'd be his cardio before he got here and not fuck at me. Imagine that guy chased you. He's fucking terrifying. I mean, see, I mean, the, I mean, you were talking about before. I think you mentioned me before, but the Met, when I had, we had that fight with the Muay Thai club at the Metro back in the day, and um. That guy Graham, I can't remember really second him. We used to fight with his man, but honestly, he must have been like six foot six and he was built like a built like the side of a house, man. I mind like they had him and the other guy were having a fight in the two of them were just like, just watching like two big robots getting going for it, man. Oh like the rock'em the rock'em sock'em robots are just oh, That's what she was, mate. And I mind that like, the guy jumped up that's and tried to like I think, it, I think it tried to like knee, fly knee him or something like that. And Graham kind of like caught like one arm under his like uh, his knee, another arm kind of up behind like in his other leg. And you're lifting them up, man. They just went like that. And just threw them backwards. And you slammed straight in his back, man. Just that was him. <laughs> Winded out. <laughs> Fight one. Ah. <laughs> like, no thanks, mate. Ah. Like, you know, so that's six foot six guys lifting you up. And also all the way up to over six foot and then just slamming you down. Because was he in the navy? Or did they button the oil rigs? It was it was the navy or the army. It was one. It was really? something like that, mate. Ah, he looked he looked the type. He was, he was just massive. He had, he had a trim kind of similar to me, you know, mate. They kind of locked him. Because I remember, I, I, I went back, I went back when I was at eight. I went back at like 18, 19. Uh, and it was, Graham wasn't there, but there was a baldy guy there. And he was, he was amazing. The guy looked a hit man. And he just, he's yeah. just beating a corner and batter you. It wasn't Greg when I turned. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name, actually. Because <laughs> uh, I, I went for a while again when I was, when I was 18, because... Uh, that that was my New Year's resolution for this year was to get back was to get back to combat sports. So I signed yeah. up for uh, the Scottish Hit Squad in Coat Bridge, mm. which is the best gym in Scotland. There, I've nailed my colours to the mast and I've said they're the best gym in Scotland. I apologise to other gyms in Scotland that I've probably offended yeah. with that, but they've got Paul Craig, they've got Paul Craig fights in the UFC, Chris Bungard fights in the UFC, uh, Ross Cooper. Fought in Cage Warriors. He's always wired personal bodyguard. Well, he was. Uh, we had to let him go. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> COVID, that was it. COVID. That's, uh, that's why you've got the camera in the house now, because he's away. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that, was his, that was his replacement. Are uh, you t- t- 10 pound eBay camera? <laughs> that's, that's three guys that are like three of the best fighters in Scotland. They're unreal. Yeah. They've all fought at like, the highest level. Chris Duncan goes there to train. Scott, Scott Malone goes there to train. So I thought, if I've got an opportunity to go there and train, it'd be kind of daft no you take it. So we'll, I'd we'll love to go there and make a mask kick, man. Hmm? I'd love to go up there and get my ass kicked. Oh, uh, I'd, get, I'd, get, I'd get slapped a bit silly for a while. A bit awful, man. Because I said it was like the beginner's course I signed up for, like beginner's striking. I was like, uh, I was like, I've done striking before, it should be. I mean, it's been a while. That's, that's it, it's been a while. I bought pads uh, over, over lockdown. Uh, we bought pads so that me and me and Susanna go into the spare room and she like hods the pads. Uh, uh, so it's, it's been great fun. Brought us closer as a family. Just leather on each other. I think it she swims, swings the pads at you when you miss. I scout you over the back of the head and all that. Uh, she does the tie crunch. But <laughs> her, her, her chest is nowhere near as hairy as Stuart's. Oh, big, uh, there you go. Oh, I was hoping <laughs> we'd come on to that, mate, honestly. I've been buzzing. I've been sitting here like, oh, come on. Uh, I can that was um, that, that just it was weird because it was like he always I don't know if he just disliked me but he always used to pick me for the demonstrations I don't know if I maybe that time I was probably co- close to his height I don't know uh, maybe that he just didn't like my face thought I was a prick uh, but I, he always used to do pick me for demonstrations and he used to just batter me for about 
10 seconds in front of the whole class. Yeah. About, about amazing. Character, but... Um, the, I mind that uh, he never used to pick me for a demonstration. Man. I think he just fucking hated me. But uh, what was it he was doing? It was like something like reverse punch, right? And mind, he, he just had his nose, nose job done. Because I think really? he broke it years and years ago or something like that, but I can't comment. But uh, like reverse punch, man, just clean missed the pad, just scudded his nose and fucking <laughs> broke, it, broke, bro- broke his nose. Oh, and no. He just, he just had it fixed. Oh, no. What and did what you I mean, Ah, you had to like, kind of, I'm just, I'm gagging, thinking of it, but it, like had to kind of click it back, and then I think he went to the ho- the hospital again that night, and it was all, it was on a scan, it was all fine. But, oh, that's oh. good. He he ran a good gym down there, man. It's a shame that it's, it's a shame that it's not there anymore. It was great for the area. Mm-hmm. It had its, may have had wee issues here and there, which we'll not couple talk of, about. Cu- couple of. Couple of um, weed, weed issues. Sorry, not weed. Um, sorry, uh, God, uh, nettles, nettle issues. <laughs> Put it this way: he had a trade membership for B and Q, and he liked buying Miracle Bro. Put it that way. That's a, that's what he liked to buy at Miracle <laughs> B and Q. <laughs> oh fuck! I hope he never sees this. Oh up. no! <laughs> all, 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 all his daughters. <laughs> Uh, uh, so you've been watching anything good in the telly recently? Uh, I think that's the last mate, one the agenda. Mate, Ken, it's a good Ken. So I keep saying Ken, right? But you know, it's a good, a good program, right? And I don't know if it's underrated, but there's so many cult moments in it. Come down with me. Come down with me. Come down with me. It's great. I love come down. Like the guy that does the voiceover. I can never remember the cunt's name, but I like him. <laughs> He's a cheeky bastard, isn't he? Yes, he's a wild <laughs> one. <laughs> see if you were watching, see if you were on it and you were watching it at home, you'd be raging. What's the oh, honestly, what is the the one with the guy like win? He's like reading out the winners. It's like that iconic kind of British TV moment, and he's like, ah, in fourth place is me, <laughs> and he goes in first place, and then he turns around and he goes like, ah, well, oh, I can't remember what that is now. It's like, well, Sandra, you've done it, haven't you? You've absolutely done it. Well done. You've got all the grace of a reversing dump truck without any wheels on. You lot. <laughs> you completely ruined my night yep. so you could win. Enjoy the money. No, have the money. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you uh, use it to buy some lessons in grace and decorum. That's it. What you so, said, mate, I don't care. <laughs> so angry. Uh, and then he's like, ah, I, now I'd like you to get off my property. And just uh, looks at her. And then the other two are just sitting there, well, well done, Sandra. <laughs> With the champagne, what? There you go. I know, I, they're all toasting, he's furious. But that's it, man, you get some absolute head cases on that. What, um, what about you, man? What else have you been watching? You've been binging The Sopranos recently. I'll be honest, mate, i never watched it. Carnage, absolute nice. carnage on the telly. I watched it years ago. I uh, absolutely loved it. It was one of my favourite TV shows because we just finished How to Get Away with Murder. Yep. On Netflix, that was that was really good. I watched that, mate. That's good. Aye, uh, because we'd finished that and I decided to we'd put like five five suggestions each into a wheel online mm-hmm. and spun the wheel and thankfully it was the Sopranos that won. Uh, Susanna hadn't even finished the first episode. Was chanting it was shite. She was like, oh, this is shit, nothing happens. And I was like, just wait. Just wait, it all kicks off. And now she's hooked. It's how, many, how many seasons is there? Six, I think. Six or seven. Oh, Jesus, man. There's like 80 I've odd not, episodes. I've never watched it, but it's one of those things, like, I, I don't know how I've no watched it kind of thing, because everybody just, everybody always says it's like, you know, like you're saying, mate, it's a cracking TV show. If, if you're looking for something to watch, it's not get that many seasons. You should probably, you should watch that Kingdom. Uh, Aye. Aye, aye, aye. It's a bit, it's a bit MMA. It's got that guy, it's got Joe Jonas. He's not, uh, he's, he's actually pretty good in that. I thought he'd be annoying as fuck, but he's not. Uh, the guy from Warrior, can't remember his name, Frank Gamalo or something, he's in it. He's cool aye. as fuck. Uh, but it's a bit MMA, like they're a family that basically trains MMA. Uh, they're all aye. fight. The dad was a, a fighter. A bit ties Is into that a true story. No. Uh, it ties into loads of different issues. Well, a lot of it's a lot of it's representative of what happens in MMA. If folk don't know it, like issues with weight cuts, issues yeah. with maybe CTE, alcohol dependency, all, all the kind of issues you might face in life. 
Uh, covers a lot of it and it's, it's really good. You kind of see a side, a mixed martial arts that you probably would never have seen before. It's, mm-hmm. it's cool. It has... When you're saying about the weight cutting hanging that mate of mind, there was a boy, uh, I think he won, it was like Scottish champion, a British champion, for like kind of flyweight or whatever, in Muay Thai. Uh, and he, he was over in Thailand fighting and he had to cut like 10 kilos in like two days or something like that, or three days. It's something nuts like that. And he just done like basically dehydrated himself and ended up dying like the, the, the day of the fight. Do you mind? I don't know if I remember seeing that. I, 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 I know who you're talking about because it's a lot. I worked with uh, her, her boyfriend was really good mates with him because he's a, he's a pro motai fighter as well. Mm. And it was, it was her, it was actually tell, it hurt, she told me about the story. Yeah, it's fucking mad, isn't it? That's did you ever have to wake up? Or did you aye. just? <laughs> aye. Did you? Like I said, because I was quite uh, lanky in that, I sometimes I did. Um, so listen to that. See, see, just because like, uh, see, just because you were that age when I was like in a 15, 16, because your metabolism, well, mine at least, anyway, my metabolism was that fast. Uh, I, I barely had to do it. I just had to just kind of go runs, not drink fizzy juice, not eat crisps, not eat like, chocolate and all that kind of shit. And I usually burn it off quite quickly. But um, usually it wasn't that bad. I used, like I said, I used to fight around about 80, 80 odd kilos or something like that. So as long as you're off, off in like two kilos or so, you're, you're all good to her. Yeah, you're cool. I think um, that's probably the benefit of doing it young, kind of getting your body used to doing it. Because you get guys now, uh, special guys that fight in the UFC, they're cutting 20 pounds. Yeah. Just to fight folk at their size because everybody else is cutting mass amounts of weight. So if you don't, you're essentially doing yourself at the service, you're fighting guys that are maybe about five inches tall than you. Well, you look, look at like your, your best pal Conor McGregor. You know, like also him used to fight them. Obviously, he didn't was he featherweight. He used Aye. to fight it originally. Yeah, he was and a then when he went up to like and then when he bulked up to kind of fight like Nate Diaz and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what was that I don't know what was that was that bad well, thing, he, was, he went from hundred and forty five pounds to hundred and seventy. I mean, it's quite a lot of weight for a guy like you know, you're used to being that weight and all that stuff. I mean, it's just you seen him as well when he was uh, weighing in for featherweight. He looked, he looked awful. He looked like Scandiana oh, Bulls. He just, looked, <laughs> he just looked terrible, man. He got so dehydrated. The colour in his face wasn't there. He just looked. Well, that's he what you used up. to do for the weigh-in before a fight. You would just uh, like you would drink. You would literally drink and drink and drink water for like. Like a, like a full week, you drink like five liters of water every single day, or more than that. And then like the day the, the day before the weigh in, you just just, just you didn't drink at all. And then the weigh in, obviously that's how you're saying you're dehydrated because your body's literally just flushed everything. Ah, uh, you would do that water loading. Yep. Ah, uh, you you just push it all out or go and jump in a sauna. Pretty much that exactly. Man, that's not I can imagine worse. That like some of them have to take a bike in the sauna. But see when you're in a sauna, the last the last thing you're thinking about is pedaling. Oh, you get like a, we had oh I'm Mr. Pot though. Um we uh we had like the wee small ones. It was like a wee Sony satin that just like went up around your neck like that. And you just hey, be sitting I, there in, I, in the Muay Thai gym, you'd just be sitting there these, like you'd sit in that for like half an hour, and then you'd get it, you know, hit some pads and all that kind of stuff, like an hour half an hour, and you'd jump back in it and it was fucking honestly, it was actually crazy how mega fit I was back in the day. Um but then I look at myself now in the mirror and I'm a bit of Oh, that's that's right, mate. I, I like a pizza on the like odds we are saying getting back into it. Mm. Good day, mate. But like you, you yourself, mate, you're the most beautiful man on YouTube because you've lost you've lost a fair bit of weight. And I then, was uh, working out about two stone I'd lost since last March. Nah. But that um that uh, photo of us when we we're out in Glasgow after the Celtic game in Mullins. Right, you're quite just to come, I've been with her, I've also been quite kind of heavy earlier, mate. Ah, is that what you're quite, you're quite cuddly. Um, Aye, uh, very. I would say you've lost a shit ton of weight, mate, since then, you know. Uh, back then, I wasn't, I was, I was doing fuck all, man. I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. I was just going to work, coming home, eating shit. Yep. Is that way you feel shit? See, if you eat shit, don't do anything, you feel horrible all the time. Uh, just demotivation, and it was during lockdown. Uh, started walking. I actually how I originally started. I just started walking, like walking with the dog, uh, going six, seven, six, seven k, uh, building for there. And then somebody had mentioned about couch to five k, yep. uh, to me, which is essentially an app for fat folk. 
Uh, I'm no sugar coating it, but us, us fatties. Uh, and it's like you do, you run for like wee bursts. So essentially, you're running for 40 seconds, resting for two minutes, 40 seconds, two minutes. Uh, and then you built for that to run in a 5k. Yep. Uh, and then built for that to end up fucking doing a half marathon. I know that was cracking, mate. That was brilliant. It's fucking horrible. I was going to say, you're puffing. <laughs> you're doing puffing at your ass after that. It. <laughs> and the worst part of it was, I think it was halfway, just under halfway. I was running. I don't know if maybe I was running on uneven ground, but my foot went. Because I've kind of I've had issues with one of my feet because I fractured it. Fractured it years ago, and since then, it can be a bit dodgy. So I was running, and I, I could hardly walk. And I was, uh, I was like, shit. I was that way, I had to stop, and I was like, ah, shit, shit. I was like, I can't walk. And, I was, and you just have to put out your mind. I was like, just put out your mind, just go. Yeah. But go, Gadget. Just like, the, just like the adrenaline, keep you kind of, just try to keep you going, mate. Essentially, I, it, was, it was that way, folk had donated a lot of money. Because yeah. I ended up raising about seven hundred and forty, not eight hundred and forty pound. I was, was that, at what was that cancer research that went? I um, McMillan. And I was okay. at, that's. I think I ran it two days before Christmas as well. So I was at, that's folk were donating ten pounds, twenty pounds, and all that. And I was at, that's a lot of money for yeah. people just before Christmas. And I was, at, I was, I, I felt kind of obliged to people to do it. I think. Okay. Uh, I was just doing a half marathon for the sake of doing a half marathon, as some folk might do. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't have finished that. I just went him. I know all those accent. weirdos that enjoy doing that stuff. I know. I was like, ah, so why do you enjoy doing this? Like putting yourself through hell. I couldn't walk oh, for about three days. I've still I mean, no really, right hands. I joined but the, the hill climbing club like everybody did on Instagram during the summer there. And uh as you you, you I think you've got one of the best comments on it. Um but anyway, the like you, you'd be sitting climbing up this hill, puffing out your arse, like your legs are burning and all that stuff. And then, like, this, like, 50 year old woman would just, like, walk past you with a wee dog, a wee starfish, just like, see you later. I got past you, just rocking past you. And I'm sitting there rolling my boot in, in the side of this hill, my back in bits, you know, and she's straight past you and then back down. I'm just like, how do you enjoy doing this? I'm no. not finding any fun in this whatsoever. Oh, folk, folk are mental. But, um, I'll, for the, for, if we're going to have like, the final note before we finish, I'm trying to think any funny TV shows that I've seen recommend to people. Uh, an old classic I went back and watched I don't know if you watched it Benadon I love Class Benadon Class, man. Aye, I really like. I've been uh, for funny seasons I've been watching Modern Family oh, mate, I, I don't find it funny oh I love it I don't know why it's the uh, it's a couple Cameron and Mitch I uh, love I them too that, really. that and the the boy Manny the wee guy yeah. that's always cutting about in suits and he's like 11 yeah. year old He's always got a suit drink, drinking espressos with a newspaper. <laughs> He's like 11. It was amazing. I don't know. So I just, I can't get in. I've watched a few episodes, man. I just don't find it funny, but it's one of those things, don't I guess? Aye. I think, I think sometimes we think that it depends what mood you're in when you first start it. But when I first started it, I was, I think I was in quite a good mood. Sort of thing. So I was watching it in a good mood and things were just making me laugh. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to, uh, there's one I watched as well, I can't remember. I'm pure sad, man. I sit and watch like World War II documentaries and all that stuff. I'm actually about 70 year old. I'm fucking like, oh, honestly, I'm, I'm due the, I'm due the bucket soon. I don't think that. Um, no, just like I said, just um, to all the Rangers fans out there, I'm feeling quite depressed about the 10 in a row. Um, so, when you go, but I'm sure there's a few like your Andy Holmes and all that stuff sitting here absolutely buzzing. Uh, but hi. So sure. hi guys, thank, thanks for listening. Uh, be sure to hit like on the video. Be sure to hit subscribe as well if you want to see more of the hands, the best looking man in YouTube. Which is a title I'm taking and I'm fucking running away from now on. I've been called it, so I can't. Nobody can say I've made it up myself. I've been called it. You supposed to <laughs> you know. So I'm taking, I'm taking that title and. For all the folk out there that are probably better than me, fuckies. Uh, so thanks for listening to the Always Wired podcast. <laughs> See you again next week. <laughs>